Okay. So the cardiovascular surveillance during cancer therapies uh, with the biomarkers or the cardiac imaging and the guidelines mentioned thoroughly the protocol for each of the following uh, drugs, the anthracycline, the HER2, the fluoropyrimidines, the uh, VEGF inhibitors, the multi-targeted kinase inhibitors, uh, the uh, proton tyrosine kinase, the multiple myeloma, immune checkpoints, androgen, and all this. We will go through the important ones and mention the important things in the non-important one. Uh, the anthracyclines, um, it's very commonly used and it's very important. Uh, for the sake of uh, boredom, we will start with uh, a case. Uh, this is a 65-year-old female uh, with breast cancer. Uh, she has stage T3, uh, uh, N1 and not metastatic. She's HER2 negative. She, she is estrogen receptor positive. She's short, 156 centimeters. She's underweight. She's 45.5. Previous disease, 1.5 years ago, the patient developed anterior STEMI and uh, PCI with drug eating stent uh, in the LED. Uh, two months later, uh, another DES uh, in the uh, RCA. And the patient had an apical thrombus for which she took oral anticoagulation, uh, ischemic cardiomyopathy with anterior scar, uh, ejection fraction of 36%, dilated LV, uh, and we they put an ICD pacemaker. Um, she's on ACE inhibitors and beta blockers. Her NT pro BMP was very much elevated, 4,231. 4, and she would have started to secubitril uh, valsartan instead of the ACE. She is a previous smoker, hyperlipidemic, hypertension, hypertensive, and positive family history. Uh, so she is a uh, heavily uh, risk for a stratified patients with smoking, hyperlipidemia, hypertension, smoking risk factor. She developed actually cardiovascular disease and tear STEMI that left her impaired ejection fraction. And currently she is stable. She has like mild symptoms, NEHA class one, maximum two, and no angina. Uh, this was her echo, uh, ejection fraction 38, dilated with apical echinesia and mitral regurgitation. And this uh, was the global longitudinal strain, uh, if we can see it here. Uh, so this is the question. Uh, what is the cardiac risk uh, in, in anthracyclines in this patient? To remember anterior STEMI, ejection fraction 38, apical echinesia, and elevated NT pro BMP negative troponin. Uh, is it a low risk if she is treated with optimized heart failure therapy? Is it a low risk if coronary disease has been interventionally treated with the stents? She has medium statins, uh, medium risk if statins are administered and smoking stopped. She is a very high risk due to low ejection fraction and ischemic cardiomyopathy. Nerga lil gadwal beta risk stratification el khadna in the first lecture, where han lay in the patients el hayagdo anthracycline therapy if they have heart failure or cardiomyopathy or chemotherapy related cardiac dysfunction, we give them uh, a very high risk. If they have myocardial infarction before or PCI, it's a high risk. If the ejection fraction is less than 50, they have a high risk. If the elevated natural peptides, we give it medium one point. And these are the risk, risk of the risk factors. Uh, it's enough to have one very high risk to be stratified as very high risk. So our patient is very high risk due to low ejection fraction and ischemic cardiomyopathy. Uh, في application بتاع pocket guidelines في risk calculators لكل الكيموثيرابي حوريكو زي تستخدموه وأعتقد it's very important when to بتردوا على consultations بتاعة الأونكولج What happened next to our patient uh, a tumor board decision إن هما ندو new adjuvant uh, chemotherapy with paclitaxel followed by cyclophosphamide with liposomal doxorubicin يستخدموا الفورم less toxic a uh, new adjuvant with planned surgery and radiation followed by adjuvant. The decision will plan. 
وزي ما هنشوف لازم نعملها كلوز كارديك فولو اب البي ام بي وتروبولين مع ايتش سايكل والايكو برضو مع ايتش سايكل وزودوا السكيوبيتري فالزرتان وادد اس جي ال تي 2 دايوريتكس وغيره البيشنت بتاعتنا كانت ستابيلايزد و underwent the breast resection therapy. طيب. The guidelines بقى بتقول A regarding the follow-up for عيانين the anthracyclines, the cardi, the 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 اللي عندهم ونشوف the cardiovascular risk. أول حاجة هنقسم عيانين the cardiovascular بتاع الأول عيانين cancer إلى low risk و moderate risk و high و very high risk. زي ما شوفنا في الجدول بتاع the icos بتاع the heart failure association. والعيانة بتاعتنا كانت actually very high risk. The common في هم إن the baseline echocardiography recommended for كل العيانين قبل ما يبدأوا chemotherapy whatever is the risk. So if it's low risk, لازم نعملها echo class one. Moderate risk, لازم نعملهم echo class one. High or very high, لازم نعملهم echo class one. The natriuretic peptides with troponin, class one for the high or very high risk, and class two A for the low or moderate risk. So for the low or moderate risk, troponin class two A. وفي الهاي والفيري هاي بيبقى كلاس 1. الف... آه بعد بيخلصوا الثيرابي كلاس 1 ليهم كلهم ان هم يعملوا ايكو كارديوجرافي مره ثانيه. الباقي بقى آه اعتقد اتس تو ماتش لان كل دراج آه هيبقى ليه البروتوكول بتاعه آه لما البيشنت يجي لك فور كونسلتيشن Uh, بص في الالجوريزم بتاعه واكوردنج للدراج هتقول له يفولو اب قد ايه اللي انت هتعمله ان انت هيكون معاك الابلكيشن uh, بتاع البوكيت جايد لاينز هتشوف الريسك ستراتيفيكيشن بتاعه اكوردنج للريسك ستراتيفيكيشن هتقول له يعمل بيز لاين ايكو ناتريك بتايدز والفولو اب بقى انترفلز اكوردنج تو كل uh, ماده على حده طيب وات اباوت ذا هير تو ثيرابي Uh, let's take another case of um, a rare 60-year-old male patient, male, and with HER2 positive uh, breast cancer, uh, T2N1M0, estrogen receptor positive, with progesterone positive. Uh, he's 176 centimeter and the weight is 67, uh, with a loss of 5 kilograms. He is a smoker, uh, has COPD, hyperlipidemic LDL is 230. Uh, he went to the cardio oncology due to dyspnea since three weeks. Uh, he has neoadjuvant apirobicin. This is uh, uh, um, anthracycline with cyclophosphamide until two months ago. Currently, he is on two anti hair 2 therapies. Uh, the the NT probe MP is 104. The troponin is negative. The creatinine is 1. Uh, heart rate is 106. Uh, echo at baseline was 66% with no wall motion abnormalities. Echo now ejection fraction is 46 with drop in the global longitudinal strain. And if we check uh, the, the, uh, the bull's eye, uh, there is hypokinesia for the sep uh, basal and sep basal septal parts. So according to the uh, guidelines, uh, the patient has dyspnea. So it could be has having mild to moderate uh, symptomatic heart failure and has moderate impairment of the ejection fraction drop to 46 with GL6, uh, GLS drop more than 50. Uh, the guidelines recommend again uh, to do an echo, an ECG and a peptides for all patients before starting the therapy. But unlike the uh, anthracycline, here the echo should be done at three months interval Fixed whether the patient is low or high risk. Uh, what happened to our patient? Um, his cardiac medication started, AS beta blocker statins, uh, as he had wall motion abnormalities. Uh, coronary CT was done and showed no coronary lesions. As he had symptomatic uh, cardiac dysfunction, we delayed the next cycle. Uh, the patient stabilized with no symptoms, no increase in BMP or troponin, so he underwent the surgery. After the surgery, he still has ejection fraction impaired, so it's asymptomatic uh, cardiac dysfunction. Uh, so the decision uh, in the case was to continue with the strastuzumab combination with close follow-up of the echo and the biomarkers for this patient. 
Uh, then we talk about the fluoropyrimidines. Um, the adwaya is like five fluorouracil and the oral pro drug uh, capsitabine. Uh, with the most common uh, cardiovascular toxicities, اللي تاخدوا بالكم منها حاجة specific للفلوروبيرمدينز, الأنجينا والإسكيميا related وممكن يعملوا تاكوتسوبو وإيفن uh, myocardial infarction ورينود فينومينا. Uh, بعد كان نتكلم على ال vascular endothelial uh, growth factor inhibitors, ال VEGF inhibitors. وبرضو علشان الموضوع ما يبقاش ممل ممكن ناخد كيس علشان نشوف example عليه. Uh, دي في ميل uh, 72 سنة uh, عندها hypertension ومش بتاخد حاجة لل hypertension she's just on diet uh, in March 2017 she was diagnosed with uh, colonic cancer advanced T4 in 2M0 and it has a Keras mutation uh, she had the surgery and take this regimen the full fox until December 2017 and she was fine in December 2, 2020 She had a local relapse with peritoneal carcinomatosis. The suggested treatment was the Fulfox again, but with this VEGF inhibitor, uh, Bevacizumab. Her blood pressure was a kind of elevated, 150 over 80. Uh, and this were the uh, BMI. Uh, her ECG was normal. Uh, blood test, she had a normal hemoglobin, a good glucose and kidney functions. Amide elevated uh, cholesterol 212, HDL and triglycerides of 115. So the question is, uh, this 72-year-old woman uh, that has hypertension, uh, dyslipidemia with normal ECG, المفروض هتبدأ الفولفوكس تاني وهتبدأ VEGF inhibitor, what is the right attitude? The patient D is considered low risk, وتبدأ إلى لاج immediately. The patient D is intermediate risk. We need to manage the blood pressure. The patient should be referred to a cardiologist or cardio oncologist before they start the treatment. And the last thing, the patient is asymptomatic and has normal EKG, so we don't need a cardiac evaluation. طيب. According to the schedule that we know about the risk stratification. Uh, in age, if she's 65 to 74, this gives her a high risk. So our, uh, sorry, a medium risk. If the patient has hypertension, this puts her as a high risk. And if you have one high risk, you are classified as high risk. This is an easier way. Um, I, I advise you to do it uh, instead of revising the uh, table in the guidelines. Uh, this is the name of the application on the Uh, Google Store or uh, Apple Store, uh, ECC Pocket Guidelines. You go uh, there for the scores, and you will find the uh, anthracycline, the, the risk stratification for this cancer chemotherapy for the anthracycline, for the multiple myeloma, for the multi targeted kinase. I chose for this patient the vascular endothelial growth factor inhibitors at baseline. This is the uh, points to answer. I answered it, and the risk level for the patient was high because she had hypertension. Easier than going to the table. So if according, if the HFAI cost, uh, score is high, it's class one in the Kenta Tebatu Lil Cardiology referral. So the correct answer is the patient should be referred to the cardiologist or cardio oncologist before starting the treatment. The patient is high risk, it's not low risk, well a medium risk, where cardiac evaluation as the patient is a high risk patient. Uh, in the uh, vascular endothelial growth factor inhibition is achieved with either monoclonal antibodies uh, or against uh, TKI, thiazine kinase inhibitors taken orally. Uh, these drugs are used for the treatment of numerous cancer types, including the renal, the thyroid, the hepatocellular carcinomas. However, their use is associated with a wide array of cardiovascular complications, including hypertension, heart failure, QTC prolongation and acute vascular events. Um, the table bit hot, our figure bit hot, my cool cardiovascular drug, I should like a toxicity that cool one that about it's very difficult to memorize it. Bas uh, hypertension is a class effect and the most uh, reported cool the VEGF, the one that we have in the the very common more than 10%, the cool home be a actually hypertension. 
Uh, left ventricular dysfunction or heart failure occurs in a minor minority of patients uh, for trials, but for routine practice, actor menkeda. Well, acute arterial events, aortic dissection, stroke, arterial thrombosis, acute coronary events, and venous thromboembolism can complicate the course. Uh, this is the regimen for follow-up. Again, it's hard to memorize. Uh, we will do ECG and echo for the low risk, ECG, echo, and natural peptides for the moderate and the high risk, and then follow-up. I advise you that all cancer patients, we do an ECG, echo, and if possible, we do the natriuretic peptides and the troponin, and then uh, check the figure for the interval follow-up. Uh, for our patient, uh, remember she had a pressure, blood pressure of 150 over 80, mm -hmm. so she was advised to monitor her blood pressure at home. Her blood pressure at home was 140 to 155 and 80, uh, over 80 to 85. So she has a hypertension grade one, and this is the slide we had before, the same thresholds as in normal individuals. We did more intensive investigations. We did her an echocardiography. She had just a mildly dilated left atrium and a good ejection fraction and a good global longitudinal strain. And the biomarkers were normal. So to treat or not to treat her hypertension, uh, uh, follow the rules for the non-cancer uh, patients. Uh, but uh, the patient, this patient, uh, if uh, she had a uh, grade one, we can give her uh, ACE or ARBs uh, plus minus calcium channel blocker, as we mentioned before in the previous lecture. Uh, so risk benefit balance and protective measures. We start, the patient was put on lisinopril once daily, uh, carvedilol, uh, 2.5 milligram twice daily. She was started on rosovastatin, 10 milligram, uh, and started the uh, VEGF inhibitor treatment. First week monitoring at home, the blood pressure was still uh, elevated. So the lisinopril uh, was increased to 30 milligram once a day. Second week, uh, blood pressure, uh, again, the systolic still a bit high. So the cardio carvedilol was 25 twice instead of 12.5 uh, twice. At three months evaluation of this patient, she was clinically stable uh, with sinus bradycardia for the high dose of the beta blocker. Her ejection fraction was good uh, with no redu reduction in the global longitudinal strain and the same for the biomarkers. Uh, let's take uh, another case uh, as uh, from the ESC, a 60 year old uh, female woman, uh, patient. She's hypertensive. Uh, treated with ramipril, uh, five milligram once a day. She was diagnosed with ovarian cancer, T2 and 0M1 metastatic. Uh, proposed treatment was carboplatin plus paclioxel plus the VEGF inhibitor. Uh, she has thyatrism. Her echo uh, ejection fraction was 56 uh, with a bit of left atrial dilatation. Her labs were good uh, with no exceptions. She was started on the treatment. After four cycles, she reported being a weaker uh, and the fatigue on going up a flight of stairs, one flight of stairs. Her blood pressure got elevated. It's a class effect for the VEGF inhibitors. It was 170 over 88. Uh, and her blood analysis was still good, but she has sinus tachycardia. Um, what is correct for this patient? Uh, Ramipril dose does not need to be increased, although his blood pressure, blood pressure is 170 now. Uh, this patient may have severe symptomatic cancer therapy related cardiac dysfunction. As the blood pressure is more than 160, ACE and calcium channel blocker is the treatment of a choice. Heart failure may be considered a common adverse effect of bevacizumab. Uh, to continue the case, echo was done. The ejection fraction was reduced. So she would have started on carvedilol and the ramipril dose was increased and we stopped the bevacizumab. Uh, the bevacizumab can cause also heart failure. So it is a common adverse effect of the bevacizumab. Uh, this number two is incorrect because 
uh, uh, this cannot be classified as severe symptomatic uh, cardiac dysfunction. It is symptomatic cardiac dysfunction, but not severe. Ejection fraction is 46, and the patient does not need hospitalization. Uh, okay. Uh, let's go through the next drugs by Absora. Uh, multi-targeted kinase inhibitors targeting the BCR ABL, the gene. In uh, the case of chronic myeloid leukemia, they have an apparent activation of the ABL1 kinase for chromosomal translocation. And there is a TKI targeting uh, this uh, translocation. في العيانين دول بالذات الكارديوفاسكولار توكسيستي بتبقى اعلى في البيشنتس اللي اكتر من 65 سنه اللي عندهم دايابيتس وهايبرتنشن او كرونيك ارتي ديزيز قبل كده فلازم طبعا زي كل العيانين نعمل لهم بيز لاين كارديوفاسكولار توكسيستي والكومبليكيشنز ار ليس في الفيرست جنريشن زي اللي هو الايماتينيب لكن السكند والثيرد جنريشن اللي هم مور ايفكتيف لكن الكارديوفاسكولار كومبليكيشن مور كومن بالذات الهايبرتنشن والبلورال ايفيوشن وفاكرين ان احنا قلنا من شويه ان الداساتينيب مشهور انه بيعمل بالمونري ارتيريال هايبرتنشن فبالتالي علشان الفيرست جنريشن الكومبليكيشنز اقل فالبيز لاين كارديوفاسكولاريسك اسسمنت بيتعمل للسكند والثيرد جنريشن الجديد في الادويه دي عن اللي احنا قلناه على الانثراسايكلينز وقلناه على الفي اي جي اف واللي قلناه على الهير 2 انه uh, ان اديشن طبعا للايكو وال uh, البايوماركرز العيانين دول هيحتاجوا ليبيد بروفايل وهيموجلوبين اي 1 سي وممكن نعمل لهم انكل بريكيال اندكس في مجموعه ثانيه اسمها بروتون تايروزين كاينيز انهبيتورز ودول بيستخدموا في الليمفويد مالجنسز اليونيك اباوت ذس جروب ان الابروتينيب الدواء ده بيبقى معاه انكريز ذا بليدنج وانفكشنز ممكن يعمل فنتيكل اريزميز ايفن من غير ما يطول الكيو تي وفي دواء جديد اللي هو الاكالا بروتينيب ده ليس كارديوفاسكولار توكسيستي كومبيرد للقديم بس سيميلر اي اف انسيدنس وعلشان كده بما انهم الادويه دي بتعمل اي اف فالديفرنت اللي تركزوا عليه في البروتون انهبيتورز دول ان هم لازم كل ما نشوفهم في العياده نحس البلس ثورلي علشان نعمل اوبورتونيستيك سكريننج فور ذا اتريال فايبريليشن وعلشان النقطه الثانيه اللي هي الهاي بليدنج ريسك فالدواء ده شود بي تيمبري انتربتد لو انا مثلا عيان ده ماشي على ابروتينيب وبياخد دول انتي بليت ثيرابي يبقى آآ آآ نوقف الدواء اثناء الدول انتي بليت ثيرابي المالتيبل مايلوما بقى تريتمنت دي الادويه اللي بتستخدم في المالتيبل مالتيبل مايلوما ممكن يعملوا كل الوايد رينج اوف ذا كومبليكيشنز ايه الديفرنس في المالتيبل مايلوما عن باقي الكيموثيرابي ان المالتيبل مايلوما بالذات عندها انكريز ريسك ان العيانين يجي لهم ثرومبو امبوليك كومبليكيشنز بالذات في الكومبينيشن بتاعت البروتيز انهبيتورز فدي الريكومنديشنز العاديه بتاعت البلا بريشر والبايو ماركرز والايكو بس او اللي عليه هنا كلام زياده في المالتيبل مايلوما ان احنا هنديهم ثيرابيوتيك دوز اوف لو موليكولار ويت هيبرين لو جالهم قبل كده في تي اي وهنديهم ادويه مالتيبل مايلوما ان البروفيلاكتيك دوزز بتاعت اللو موليكولار ويت هيبرين هنديها لهم ات ليست فور 6 مانث وممكن لو الـ لو عندهم ريسك اوف بليدنج وخايفين من لوكال ويت هيبرين نحط لهم اسبرين كلاس 2A النوكس كلاس 2B في المالتيبل مايلوما بيشنتس رقم 8 رابيدلي اكسيتيتنج فايبروسايكوما دراجز دي الكومبليكيشنز اللي ممكن يعملوها الهايبرتنشن اكشولي از كومن الهايبرجلايسيميا والديابيتس از كومن البليدنج كمان از كومن الاميونو تشيك بوينتس انهبيتورز طبعا احنا اتكلمنا عنها كتير بتاعه الميوكارديتس وعلشان كده لازم نعمل لهم اي سي جي ونرجع بالتايدز وبيز لاين ايكو كارديوجرافي ونتابع التروبونين مع السايكلز اللي هياخدوها بعد كده 
الناس الرجال اللي عندهم بروستات كانسر وهنديهم اندروجين ديبريفيشن دي الكومبليكيشن البوسيبل برضه كل الكومبليكيشنز از بوسيبل بس ان في الادويه بتاعتهم هم في نوعين تي جي ان ار اتش انتاجونست از اسوشيت ويز سيجنيفيكانتلي لور اوفر اول مورتاليتي وكارديوفاسكو ايفنت كومبيرد ويل جي ان بيل جي ان ار اتش اجونست وعشان كده النقطه اليونيك في الريكومنديشنز بتاعتهم ان احنا لو العيانين دول عندهم بري اكزيستنج سيمتوماتيك كرونيك ارتي ديزيز وهياخدوا الاندروجين ديبريفيشن ثيرابي ياخدوا الانتاجونست ما ياخدوش الاجونست الاندوكراين ثيرابيز للبريست كانسر هما برضو بيزودوا الريسك بتاع الديابيتس والهارت فيلير والميتابوليك سندروم وعلشان كده هنعمل لهم اسسمنت بالسكور بتاع الديسليبيديميا Uh, I will not go through بقى كل الحاجات التانية هو نفس الكلام كل العيانين هنعمل لهم ايكو كل العيانين هنعمل لهم ناتشوريال بيبتايدز كل العيانين هنعمل لهم اي سي جي اللي هيفرق بعد كده في بعض الحاجات هنعمل لهم حاجات زيادة واللي هيفرق برضو uh, كنقطة تانية غير هنعمل لهم حاجات زيادة الفولو اب وده ممكن تطلعوه من الالجوريزم والحاجة الأخيرة إن أنتوا تخلوا معاكوا السكور على الابلكيشن أول ذا تايم قبل ما انهي حابب اوريكم الكيس دي ده 34 يير اولد ميل بيشنت كلموني عليه اول امبارح الاربع الصبح هو كان في الناشونال كانسر انستتيوت بيتعالج من اكيوت مايلويد لوكيميا ممكن يا جماعه نعمل بس سايلنس للمايك بتاعنا اللي مش عامل فهو 34 يير اولد ميل بيشنت Uh, بيتعالج من اكيوت مايلويد لوكيميا على فين كريستن والدوكس روبسون uh, جاله تيبيكال تشيست بين عملوا له اي سي جي لقوه انثرو بوسترو لاترال اس تي اليفيشن مايوكارديال انفاركشن ودي الكورونري uh, انجيو uh, بتاعته uh, لو انتوا ركزتوا في الصوره uh, في ثرومبس uh, في البي دي اي موجوده نون فلو ليميتنج وفي ثرومبس في البارا اوستيال والبروكسيمال سيركمفلكس اكشولي ذس بيشنت اي ديدنت انترفين فيه لانه هي دازنت هاف ديزيز همشي على انتي ثرومبوتيك ريجيمنت وبعد اسبوع مثلا ممكن اصوره تاني اشوف ايه الاخبار uh, النقطه الثانيه ان لو فكرنا مثلا في ثرومبس اسبيريشن Uh, it is risky ان انا اعمل thrombus aspiration في ال proximal circ ممكن uh, اعمل complication في ال left main او في ال proximal RCA فعيان off pain now وما عندوش flow limiting thrombosis. Uh, this بقى conclude ال uh, uh, cardio oncology uh, 